This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, AKA the Python Hyena. And folks, we are here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, here on a beautiful Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. And I have a return guest. In fact, we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of Scanners, one of my favorite David Cronenberg film, as well as celebrating the artistic talents of my guests. Folks, I give you the awesome Stephen Lack. How do you do, Stephen? Good, Greg. How are you? Good to see you again. It's great well, to actually, see you. I think you. this is the first time I'm seeing you. The I don't think I saw you last time. I think we did it on the phone. Yes, we did. I remember it well. Um, that was uh, during a morning, and uh, I wasn't sure I was going to be to make it because I was working at our family's water plant at the time, and it was way out of town. But we got it done, and that was in 2016. So uh, I have fond memories hmm. of that. Yeah. I wish I had memories. Well, you know, I seem to remember in scanners, your hair was dark. Now, were you using your scanner powers so much that your hair changed color? Yeah, like Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I've been under a lot of pressure. Well, I should show you this. Look at this beautiful Blu-ray. Oh, yeah. And it's signed. Yeah, interesting cover. It says, my head blew up real good, Louis Del Grand. <laughs> yeah, you got the- Nice the, guy. Yeah, I met him at Horrorama and, in Toronto in 2018. And I was so surprised at what a sense of humor that guy had. And it was the first time he'd ever done uh, a convention and he said that Chris Alexander can talk you into doing anything and uh, so uh, I brought this and got him to sign it I got a picture here somewhere what, that he signed too with his head exploding and he wrote the same thing on it but I remember I had messaged you on Facebook that I was meeting him and and uh, you had mentioned you responded and said he was a great guy and I told him and uh he spoke very kindly of you. Oh, good. I didn't uh, tie his wife up or anything. Nope. <laughs> no, his wife was in Black Christmas. I, I did not know that. But uh, hmm. yeah, you pull this out and you got, a, you got a picture back there and you got Michael Irons there. <laughs> Got yeah, a nice wild illustrations. Look at all the disc in there. So you got quite a bit. You got a big booklet here, and uh, let's see if they got a picture of you in here. They should have a picture of you in here, doing your scanner. Well, there's uh, you know, they're a little hesitant on that because uh, uh, I kind of had it in my contract that my picture was only to be used for the original release of the movie. Oh, okay. So that's why you don't see other uh, pictures of me. Uh, uh, we had a, a bit of a, a disagreement way, way back when, because they, uh, anyway, it's a long story. It's one of those film things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and later on, I, I met with JJ Abrams and, when I told him, you know, that that's why there's no pictures of me, he was like really surprised. He said he'd never heard of an actor uh, doing that. But mm -hmm. I said, uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to stay in the business. So if your face is being repeated all over the place like that, mm -hmm. uh, you have to have protection. You have to have protection from people who suddenly become overly familiar. And to do that, you have to have a big income. And to have that big income, you have to continue working. Eek, that's mm. not the way I roll. No. <laughs> well, you know, I love this film. Um, I was going to say, uh, rather than rehash what we had talked about before on it, just wonder what is your fondest memory of making this film? Uh, let me see. I mean, I got so many uh, uh, good memories. 
of the film. Uh, some of them are blue, so they're probably not ready for a maritime broadcast. <laughs> uh, you know, um, you know, I think my favorite moment, and, and I've repeated it over and over a lot of times, was uh, helping Dick Smith out in the post-production. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, under a lot of pressure. We were reshooting the final scenes where my head explodes and the veins ripple and all of that. And yeah. he had, uh, you know, he had pioneered the technique of using bladders and, and uh, limited area appliques so they didn't have to remake the whole face, the whole makeup. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so he was working on those bladders to make the veins pop out and it wasn't working. There was no pressure. He uh, uh, had a leak somewhere in the line and he couldn't figure it out. He was hypoglycemic, so he was getting a little sugar blow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was sitting in the chair. We hadn't hit it off too good because he wanted to photograph my eye color on a Sunday morning after a, uh, I had just gotten to bed about four hours earlier. And he wanted me to look in the sun so he could get an accurate reading on my eyes. I was not totally cooperative. So he thought I was a little bit odd to be working with, but now here I was in the chair all wrapped up in bibs, ready to be uh, appli appliqued. Mm -hmm. And he, his end was falling apart. And uh, I'm an old car head and I said to him, Dick, why don't you submerge the bladders in water? And that way, when you put the air through it, you'll see where the bubbles are coming and that's gonna solve your problem. Oh my God, well, he was a bright puppy and he respected a good, saving solution to a problem you know and after that uh we became uh good friends people mm -hmm. respect etc cetera, etc cetera. and after scanners uh um he sent me the head the prosthetic where the liver was shot through the eyes mm -hmm. and that uh was in my personal possession for a number of years oh you oh, the that. only uh <laughs> What, I don't have it anymore? Yeah. <laughs> no, I gave it to somebody to protect for me. Oh, okay. You know, it's a big responsibility. I live out in uh, a countryside, and God forbid ants should attack the Cairo syrup in the middle of the night or anything <laughs> like that. I get you. Know? I get you. Yeah. It's not just Chad, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Because uh, I know you also did Dead Ringers with uh, David Cronenberg. Have you? Uh, are you still in touch with him? Any? Do you hear from him? Any? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in touch. We're in you touch. Know? Yeah, David. Uh, David and I have a uh, mutual admiration society. Mm -hmm. uh, he likes my paintings. Uh, I think he says he does. He even buys a few. Okay. But, uh, and he's trying. Uh, and, you know, I really appreciate his mind. I mean, you know, apart from the films that he makes, uh, some of the philosophies behind it are so interesting. Yeah. And, uh, and I got to say, I recall some of his words uh, almost every day, you know, mm -hmm. because he pointed out something that his films were about us mutating as a species. And that's all well and good uh, in a sci-fi context. But you just have to look around to see how that is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandchildren are living with me now, and I've got a 12-year-old grandson, and I talk to other parents of 12-year-olds, and their kids don't look up. Their kids don't look out the car window when they're driving somewhere. They're on their devices. Uh, their attention span seems to be nil, but at the same time, they are acutely aware of everything that's around them. So it's very strange and it is a mutation. And mm -hmm. the communication to them when they open their mouths and start to talk, uh, the rate of communication is like talking to a freaking cricket, you know? <laughs> I mean, ta -ta 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 -ta, you know? Yeah. So you gotta decode it and everything that goes with it. So yeah, we are mutating. I see it in the children. I see it in their muscle tone. 
I see it in their proclivities. They don't want to go out anymore. They're afraid of the external world. They've like the balance is tipped. It's no longer go out and exercise, take a walk after dinner, go play sports after dinner. No. So if that's being eliminated, what is it being replaced by? Uh, you're a film head, obviously. Uh, you, you look at a film, you enjoy a film. Uh, the film is based on other people's live experiences. Those are compressed into uh, your hour and a half or two hour experience. You, you try, other people absorb that and then they take it with them. Mm -hmm. But now with things like COVID, people aren't having their own experiences. So no. how much of that is going to be relevant to people that don't have a vocabulary or syntax to relate to? So that too is starting to shift. And whether it's going to go into a Barosian reality, like uh, where people aren't even being entertained by scripts or linear thinking or figurative painting, they're just going to have their brains wired and various stimuli going in and coming out. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they'll have uh, uh, device blackouts where they have to force the children and the adults into periods of time where they actually have to interface with an analog reality. Yeah. There we go. You know, it's funny. So you ask me how David is? He's yeah. fine. He's going to Greece. He's going to be making another movie. Wow. You knew that? I didn't, didn't know, know that. that. No. Get a lot of exclusive. I mean, that's what I hear. That's what I read in the, in the occasional trade that makes its way, you know? Well, apparently yep. they had he was booked to actually do his first convention and then COVID hit, you know. They finally had had Good. him go go to a convention and I'm like, wow, because I've got several of his movies here. In fact, um, I met Louis Del Grande and I met uh, Lynn Laurie from Shivers and she signed a bunch of stuff for me and uh, at the uh, Horror Rama and we talked about David and uh, David's got a great mind and uh, he's done a lot of fantastic stuff. I have a lot of respect for him. But yeah, you mentioned COVID. Now, I've been going back to the movie theater since last July. I can't get in our station. Thank goodness for Zoom. But um, we're right now in what you call the yellow phase here, which means if we get mm. to the if we get to the green phase, we're home stretch. You know, what's it like uh, where you are right now? Uh, uh, it's pretty open. Okay. You know, I've had both vaccinations. Most of the people my age have. Uh, I still wear a mask wherever I go. You're 39, though, mask, right? Just, you know? You're yeah, 30, 39. 39. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jack Penny cornflakes. So, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's pretty creepy because, you know, the fact of the matter is, number one, uh, we're very happy to have the vaccines. And number two, we don't know what the vaccines are really going to do, how long they're going to last, when you're going to need booster shots. If booster shots are needed, what's going to be the uh, scale tipper? that lets you know that you need a booster shot, how many people are gonna to have to die to, and have that reported and that information, you know, coordinated so that you are warned and supplied and revaccinated. Uh, there's so many factors. I think basically it's telling people that even though you feel good, you are, you could be at any time dead, which, you know, as a young uh, freak in the undergrounds, uh, I kind of felt that way for a long period of time, and then you coast. But I don't think the, uh, um, what are they, uh, the muggles really understood how close to death they were, but they are mm -hmm. uh, in large numbers, cordwood. So, you know, and that's where David comes in as a, as a uh, you know, as a bit of a uh, harbinger, a messenger. Mm -hmm. You know, it, was it rabid where you had bodies stacked up like cordwood for a while, you know? Um, and the same thing with uh, a lot of my work. That's one of the zones that David and I intersect with, that we both have a uh, sense of the future based on the triangulation with the present and our own uh, sense of history. Yeah. 
No, I haven't had the vaccine yet. I'm scheduled next Wednesday to get my first one. I'll be frank, I haven't uh, even seen anything around here, you know, like nobody I've known has had COVID, you know, um, I've mostly worked by myself. I usually work the back shift and I'm usually, uh, or in the evenings, I'm usually by myself. So I'm never around people, uh -huh. you know, if I go get groceries, I wear a mask, but it's, um, but well, keep your distance. Yeah. But I would like to babe to go to Toronto for Horrorama this fall if it's opened. You know, I'm not going to go if I have to quarantine for two weeks and then quarantine two weeks when I get back because that puts me out of work for a month and a half. You know, I can't do that. But if it's right. oh, yeah, but if it's opened enough and if you have to have the vaccine to travel, I'll chance that. My parents both got the vaccine, so. Um, I'm hoping it uh, works. I know people that are skeptical about it, and I get it. I get it. But, um, you know, I'd like to be able to to travel this fall and see more cool people. And hopefully they'll get you to Horrorama at some points. Because I told Chris Alexander that uh, you'd be a good catch for it. Well, I don't know. I guess so. I mean, there's people that remember me. I God bless them. Mm -hmm. You know, I did Monster Palooza and Chiller down in the States, and that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but I've never done anything in Canada. And uh, like you say, the quarantine restrictions are uh, prohibitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an exhibition in Montreal I couldn't go to. Uh, I've got the new book coming out. We're trying mm -hmm. to figure out if I can come up to uh, Fredericton to uh, do a I book hope signing so. or something. <laughs> I hope well, so. Never... I want to meet you, you know. I would buy your book, get you to sign it, and uh, <clears throat> I'd even get you to put your signature on this somewhere, too. Although I think uh, <laughs> Louis Del Grande pretty much got the whole cover, but I could, I, I'd i be honored, you know. But uh, oh, Well, down at Chiller, there would be people lining up that had uh, – posters and memorabilia from scanners and they had all the names like I was the last name because I had never appeared at a festival before I guess Ironside also is pretty hard to get yeah Michael yeah Michael Ironside and uh but Louis Del Grand that was the first one he had done and uh, like I said I'm repeating myself here but I couldn't believe what a great sense of humor he had he was enjoying himself but boy you see him as a serious guy in that film, but boy, he, he could, you could joke with him all day. I had a hard time leaving his table. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, Canadians have great senses of humor, you know. Well, you're Canadian. Living next to the elephant. Yes, I am. And, and I could be pretty funny. Your wife is from Moncton. That blows my mind, you know. Like I don't. Most people don't even know where New Brunswick is, and and um, you know what St. Thomas is, and UMB, and and uh, I so hope that that uh, you get to come up here and do a book signing. And please keep me in the loop on that, because yes, I okay. will go. I will go, and I'll purchase a copy of your book right there. Good. Do you have I'll it there? You. That's that's uh, fine. Yeah, yeah I, that's fine. I'll buy a copy from you. Sure. What have I got? Here's here's what the cover looks like. Can you read that? It yeah. Looks when you when you are coming home. No, when are you coming home? How come when, it's oh, inverted? That's interesting. Can I do something? That's awesome. When are you? That looks when great. Are you coming home? Yeah, Stephen Lack paintings. I know I look on, I see your posts all the time on Facebook. And I know you do, a, I know you love to to draw cars. I love, oh, I love that house there. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about like cars here. Yeah. There's a caddy. Uh, oh, look at that. But we like to deal with the tougher subjects as well. There you go. There you go. And it's got a beautiful uh, uh, essay by Terry Graff. I know uh, that who, name. 
I know that. Well, he used to run the Beaver Brook. Okay, that's how I know that name. <laughs> okay, the Be oh, Beaver. Oh yeah, he, Brook re he restructured the Beaver Brook. Uh huh. And uh, and he did a beautiful essay for the book. Uh huh. And then uh, another guy you probably don't know, but he's pretty well known. You can Google him. Is Carlo McCormick, and he okay. wrote the foreword. Okay. And uh, here's a nice one. There you go. Wow. So it's got over 60 images in it. Here's a question. And, uh, oh, here's a nice thing. Okay. Here's something you won't see. I'll, I'll give you the backstory on it. Yeah. So years ago, uh, they were doing the East Village covering it for Life Magazine, East Village, New York. Uh huh. And so this one didn't get in the mag, but can you see that? I can, yeah. Oh my. Okay, that's my wife and I in the uh, in the studio in Manhattan mm -hmm. back in the day in like 1984. So mm -hmm. that's right after I officially except for one gig with David and Dead Ringers, I stopped working with films, you know? That way I could compress everything into the paintings. So which you were are filmic. So were you painting before you were acting because I know you did the rubber yes. gun and okay. Rubber gun, I was a painter in that. So I was so, a painter in uh, Montreal, Maine. I was okay. So what? Uh, you know, take it, take us back to the beginning. What what interested you? What prompted you to want to go into painting? Oh, because it was too expensive to sculpt. Mm-hmm. I was. I started off as a sculptor, mm -hmm. and uh, I needed some credits. I was uh, leaving the uh, Instituto de Allende in uh, San Miguel in Mexico, mm -hmm. and uh, I was getting my master's degree, and uh, uh, they told me I was short three credits. So I had to make up these credits really quick because I was restless, uh -huh. and... Uh, and so I banged out some paintings and some drawings and fulfilled the obligations for a painting credit. And once I did that, I really, you know, had great pleasure with it. It uh, results, I'm a bit of a impatient person. I'm behaving here, but uh, <laughs> normally I can, you know, sound like a squeaky hamster on the wheel. And um, anyway, uh, yeah, the results were quick, instantaneous. And I kind of attack painting like a sculptor. Each mm -hmm. painting stands by itself. You could almost walk into it and walk around the content. So I'm not that much into a decorative conclusion. And, uh, and I got respect for the work pretty quickly. So I didn't turn back. I tried my hardest to get a, an education in it. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was the 60s. I went to one school and they went on strike and I went to another school and nah, they weren't ready to have me at the level I wanted to go in. So I just did it because you can't wait. That's yeah. right. Wow. Well, I love your work, you know, and I always see it on Facebook, you know, when you post something and uh I think I think you've got a style all your own, and um, yes, I I know actors that do sculpting. I know Neil Clifford from Class of 1984 sculpts. Uh, Day Young from Rock and Roll High School, she sculpts. But there's a lot of actors also going to painting. I heard Meryl Streep paints, you know. So. Um, uh huh. Yep, there's a lot. Um, I think he's married to a sculptor. Yeah. Um, I think Meryl's husband is a sculptor. There you go. So uh, I know I've interviewed a lot of people that uh, take up painting. Adrian King from Friday the 13th is uh, also paints. And I've seen some of her work as well. So I think that's fantastic, you know, and I'm glad you found that passion. Um, what's your favorite thing to paint? I know you do a lot of cars because I see them a lot, but is there a favorite thing? Uh, subject that uh, you could sit down and uh, just lose yourself d uh, doing? Uh, you know what? 
that's like asking Ray Charles, what's his favorite song to sing? Oh, there you, you go. Know, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you, you build up your repertoire, mm -hmm. your abilities, uh, and then you go in the studio and you've got your prompts and you've got your predetermination or sometimes you don't have anything and you just say, well, now you, you make it real quiet and you, you want to hear that inner voice. And it kind of lets you know what the mood is. If you went in there and you're angry and you see something that looks all sweet and nice and you attack it and you screw it up, you fuck it up. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That makes you feel better. You, you just do it because you believe that you are connected to all people. Mm -hmm. And what it is that's going through you is going to go through a section of them. You don't want to kill people because of what you do. You don't want to hurt anybody. You want to make a pop. You want mm -hmm. to bring something to people that they haven't already seen. Or if they have seen it, they haven't seen it lately. And it's an old friend. So, you know, that's, that's kind of it. I mean, yeah, I paint a lot of cars, but I don't paint the details of the cars. The cars I like the are, cars. Well, yeah. you know, a lot of car heads don't like my cars because they want, they want the same painting, which is like a poster of a Cobra with a wet fender and a bent palm tree bending over the curve. Yeah. And I don't do that. You know, yeah. I do my Cobra is going to look like a larva that's bottom feeding on its way through your garage and going to eat you in the living room. So that's, uh, that's, that's how we roll. Yeah. No, I, I, I love your imagination. I remember the first time that we spoke, you said that you were going to send me, and you did send it, uh, a picture of party pythons with party hats on. <laughs> oh, yeah. The party hats, party pythons. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like I that. Think Hold on, let me just see. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. You know, the uh, the the uh, the school, St. Thomas, also did this book, which, again, you're seeing it in reverse. So I don't know what that's Actually, about. Actually, it says uh, right here, this is a war. I mean, I'm seeing it perfect. Okay. If it so was I me, forget, like... I think... Will you see it backwards? Let me see. I don't know whether Party Pythons is in here, but it might yeah. be. Like, it's funny, because when I look at my picture in this camera, I see Carrie on my shirt in reverse. But I see everything you're showing me perfectly. <laughs> so. Well, there you go. And I see your Carrie, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm not seeing Party Pythons. I thought it might be in the book, but I guess not. But this book is kind of great, also published by the same people. There you and go. It's got, you know, pen and oh, pen that drawings. looks great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's awesome. Yeah. St. Thomas, you know, I love that connection, you know, because I don't hear a lot down here. There you go. That is beautifully detailed. Oh, great. That is fantastic. So, you know, we deal with issues. Oh, here's Whitey's house. Oh, man. I like that. That The detail. Like, I, I can't draw at all, you know, but uh, everybody's got their own talents. Well, you are... You don't have to. I have to. <laughs> you, well, you're top-notch. Yeah, I hope you can get down here to do a signing with your book. You know, I would, uh, I'd be in line for that. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm looking here to see what else I have just hanging around. Oh. There we go. You asked me what I like to paint? Yeah. Yeah. I like to paint fat gangsters. I like to paint <laughs> the smugness eroding. I, I like that. <laughs> that is great. That is great. Yeah. So, so uh, there we go. How long does it take you like to get uh, started on a painting? Like I remember when I was young, I used to write, but it would take me, it, it was hard for me to get started on writing something, you know, and, but uh, you know, um, 
is there like a, a strategy you have when it comes to this or do or is it all off the cuff both both okay <laughs> okay <laughs> But uh, yeah, you have a strategy. You have your history, and you mm -hmm. have your uh, your uh, compulsion of the moment. And you gotta have that compulsion of the moment, or you're mm -hmm. dealing with de dead, dead, dead. Yeah, so you gotta be alive. You know, you never know what it's gonna be, and you allow it to be that which surprises you because you want to surprise other people. Yes, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. among other things. Absolutely. You want to seduce them. <laughs> and you want to make them black out. Then you want to pull their pants down and tie it around their ankles. And then you want to chase them around the studio with a cattle prod, right? <laughs> oh, my cat will, uh, I chase him around here. He's, he went and hid the moment I got on here. He knows I'd grab him. <laughs> oh, well, where's my animal? Ziggy. Oh, I think he's outside. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no scanners celebrating a 40th anniversary here folks <laughs> and there we go Ziggy, come here someone wants to look at you hold on yeah there Ziggy. we go Ziggy, come here come here, <laughs> come here. Oh, you got you animal you won't cooperate come here <laughs> Maybe he's as shy with the camera. Yeah, I can. Did you see Ziggy? <laughs> Ziggy, come here. Ziggy. <laughs> Show yourself, you crazy animal. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oi. Oh. Okay, there that's you know. that. He's oh like well. five pounds and he's shot. Oh, he's shy. Come here. <laughs> well that that's okay. You can never get his face on anything. Ziggy, come here. That's Ziggy, all right. There. there he is. Yeah, I see him. Ziggy, look at the camera. Look this way. No, oh, I see his eyes. He's got great eyes. Oh, yeah. He's uh, half husky, half bouvier. Yeah. I don't know where my cat That's is right boy. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, my dog would like to eat your cat. And he is a real Canadian. He's from... Uh, he's from... Uh, British Columbia. British Columbia. Pemberton. Okay. Yeah, he once, he, a couple of times he ran away from Pemberton and was found in Whistler, 35 kilometers away, through the brush, through the glacier forest. So your dog's a rescue. Uh, I, no, my son, it's my son's dog, and, uh, and I keep him now because my son isn't in a living situation where there's room for the dog mm -hmm. and uh, and that's it. But he got the dog at about six months from somebody else who couldn't handle him because he was too much dog. <laughs> now he's 10 years old. So, you know, he's behaving. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's an animal. <laughs> yeah. My cat sometimes comes over here and rubs against my leg, but no moment he sees me at this desk, uh, you know, he, know, he knows I'm going to exploit him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, they're <laughs> union. They don't like to be exploited. There you go. Okay, well, so happy anniversary. I'm, I'm glad that people are still counting and that it's been 40 years. 40 years and, of scanners. Uh, 40, 40 years. Years of scanners. What do you think about that, you know? Does it seem well, like yesterday? I'm yes glad that it held up. I, I think so. Uh, yep. Does it seem like yesterday? Yeah. Well, seeing as how I've been married since then and had two kids and now grandkids and a lot of water's passed under that bridge. But uh, all I can say is this week, go out, get the book. Yes, and, absolutely. Oh, actually, you can't go out and get the book. You can only, uh, maybe if you got contact at St. Thomas University, Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking to a couple of Canadian chain stores to see if they'll carry it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll probably post it on Facebook how it's available, both in Canada and the United States. Okay. There's a bookstore that's taking it on down here and a few others. So, yeah.
the, the reaction is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, would you have copies there at the signing or would I have to get one and bring it with me? Well, of course. Okay. No, no, no. We would have copies there at the signing. Okay. Oh, because, yeah. Because uh, uh, if you'd have some there, I would get it when uh, you were there and I'd get you to sign it. Exactly. I that's, hope you get to come goal. here. I'm hoping you get to come well, here. Well, me too. Yeah, I think that would me be fantastic. Me too. I want to go to Shediac. I, w I want to be at Cap de May. I hear they're going to try and build a condo complex there. I want to mm -hmm. get there before they do. Uh huh. And uh, and I want some pins and uh, some Gould's clams. So, you know, I have my aspirations. Absolutely. And I don't mean poutines with their cheese curds. I mean the real deal, the poutine rapé. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know what? You know I, I hope I hope that your book does well. Um, I'm definitely going to ha get a copy of it, but if I can get it from you at a signing, I, I'd love to do that. And um, I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. Keep me posted on that because... Uh, Yes, I would definitely be there for be there for. Oh, well, Sarah, on my Facebook page, it will be there. Yeah, well, I've got you on Facebook, okay. so uh, we'll be able to make that connection. You know what? It was wonderful having Great. you come on here today, and uh, and uh, it was short notice, but you know what? It was fantastic. I I hope that uh, um, I gave you a good interview, um, and uh, yeah, this was a delight. For sure. Yeah. Always Absolutely. fun talking to you. We're a little less hyper than we were last time, you know, because we were not doing visuals, so we didn't get to watch our mouths move. <laughs> yeah, right? well, well. It's all Python radio. So yeah. you need to let me know how people love us, you know, I need the love. Well, I'll send it to you whenever I get it. Um, I'm still affiliated with the station. It's just I haven't been there in over a year, and I don't know how to send them stuff. Yeah. So they're kind of send playing reruns of me. But um, I do put my stuff on uh, Facebook and YouTube, so uh, people do get to see it. So, yeah. So Good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you mind good before talking with you, Greg? <laughs> it was great talking with you too. I was wondering if you'd mind doing a plug for my show before you uh, sign off. How so? Just state your you name. Mean just say. Just state your name. I know and... what you mean. Yeah. Like yeah. Different... Yeah. yeah. And hold like, your uh... and hold and hold your book up one more time for us too when you do it. Yeah. Hi. This is John Lennon. And I'm a WPTR good guy. <laughs> That's what we used to have in the 60s. Yeah. So uh, I could say, yeah, uh, when are you coming home? Where have you been? Well, one of the places I've been while I was away and coming home was visiting with Greg Gilbert, the Python. How's that? That is fantastic. Celebrating the 40th anniversary of Scanners, and we have the hero himself, the guy who put Michael Ironside in his place there in that dual battle of the minds there at the end of it. <laughs> oh, that didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good talking. God bless you, and thank you so much for coming on my show. And uh, you're always going to have affection on this end. So uh, you take care and keep uh Excellent. keep painting keep painting you take care you have Can't a wonderful stop. day yep bye bye okay.